they took Jesus to a place called the Skull, where they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing, but they divided his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. He saved others, let him save himself, if he is Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers came and mocked him, offered him wine vinegar, and said, if you're king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a note above him which said, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him, saying, aren't you Christ? Save yourself and us. And the other criminal rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence? We're punished justly. We're getting what our deeds deserve. This man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, Verily I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. Easy. Easy justice, right? Instantaneous salvation. All those things that just pop right up there. But it's, it's amazing to stop and think that at a, at a time when they were dying, people could rebuke him, people could love him, people for the first time could honor him. A few weeks ago, I got an email from somebody in the church. He may recognize it when I talk about it. But a college professor had his class, when the class came in on each of the places where they sat, there was a piece of paper with a single black dot in the middle of the paper. And he said to them, write a short essay. And afterward he took the papers and he read them and he said, I'm not grading you on this assignment, but 21 of you out of 21 wrote about the dot. Everyone saw the dot. No one saw the white, the vast expanse. We concentrate on the things that are harsh. We concentrate on the things that, that bug us at this moment when we, stop, when we don't stop to realize that our grace is so fantastic. Our grace is beyond any hurt. Our grace is beyond any demonstration of wrongness. Yeah. We concentrate on the black dots in our life. Sometimes they're huge. Sometimes they, you can't see around them. But there's always light around them. If you turn off all the lights in here at midnight, it's pretty dark. But if you light one candle, you'll see it. No amount of darkness can overcome any amount of light. But we get so concentrated on that which is dark in our life that we fail to look at that which is bright and wonderful in our life. The comment was made at Bible study, was it the thief on the left or the thief on the right who said, save me? Was it the one on the right or was it the one on the left? And before, as you think and contemplate, which way do you think it would go? And then remember, is it Christ right or Christ left? Or as I see him, is it my right or my left? That salvation is offered instantaneously when you accept the fact that Christ is the source of salvation. And it doesn't make whether any difference whether you're on the right side or the left. Yeah, it doesn't even make any difference if the only thing you can see is the black dots. If in your heart you can accept him as your savior, that's what makes the difference. Every one of us has a lot of black spots on our on our paper. Things that have happened in our life that have made it difficult. And yet, we sometimes forget all of the good days, all the wonderful days 
the friendships, the love that has passed into and out of our life. We're just vehicles. We're thinking of salvation, or yeah, salvation, Thanksgiving. We're gravy boats. We're just there to pass the gravy on to the dressing and the potatoes, to bring flavor into the life of those around us, to savor that which we can give to the, to the heavenly feed that we get from Christ. Yeah, just think. Your honor this week is to be a gravy boat. The greatest honor I can think of. Because that's what makes the meal. It ain't the turkey. It ain't the cranberries. It's the gravy and the potatoes and dressing. It's the love that's poured out over everything. It's the love that lets us see the white on the paper with the black dot. To dismiss that which is harsh. Dismiss that which is such, so painful and such a hurt. And realize that most of life, most of life is fantastic. Most of life is wonderful. But we concentrate on the black dot. You know, I'd have probably done the same thing. But we stop and pause and realize what gifts, what a wonderful gift we've had in the life that we've had, the partners we've had, the friends we've had, the loves that have been through and into our lives and interwoven in our very lives. And we're just like the thief on this side or this side. Yeah, this side or this side. It a lot depends on how we see things as to how they reach us. The same message comes. The same opportunity comes to both the thieves. One chose to chastise him and say, come on, get me down because I can see the black dot. And the other said, save me, remember me when you're in paradise. And he could see the white of the paper. It's a great sermon. I mean, it, it, it's a wonderful thing to realize that in that instant you can be saved. But don't wait until you are hanging on a cross. Don't wait until the troubles in your life are overwhelming you to say, remember me. Remember me. I want to see the white. I want to see the brightness. I want to see the life that God has given me. So don't wait. Two thieves lived a life of, of crime and were justly sentenced to death. A horrible death, a painful death. And one said, save me from what I've earned. And the other said, save me. That's what we ought to be crying out. When we run into the black dots in our lives is to say, just save me, Lord. I've earned this. Oh, heaven knows I've done enough. I put enough black marks on my own paper. I've done enough things that I could justify whatever God wants for me. But my hope, my, my understanding of the promise is that I don't get justice. I get mercy. I don't get what I deserve. I get absolute love. I don't get black dots. I get a clean sheet of white paper. Yeah. One thief said, save me from this. And the other one said, save me. Christ won't get us off the cross if that's where we are but he will save us from that which comes next. We had a great concert for that Friday, and I really appreciate your efforts. And, and he took us around the world and wanted to do a polka. And, and, and the music soothed us for a while. It lifted us up. 
because we were in a mood to be entertained. We were in a mood to hear it. Well, we need to get in that same kind of mood to listen, the mood to listen and hear what Christ has in store for us and not be afraid to say, save me from me. Amen. In an instant, he will save you if he's asked. In an instant, he'll save you if you're ready. Go in peace.